Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Flu season, be prepared. Get your immunizations now at Rose City Drug, your one-stop pharmacy, home health care, and medical supply outlet. Offering a variety of on-site immunizations. Walk-ins are, of course, welcome. Call now for more information. Discount Foods Downtown Bio. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods Downtown Mayo. Hingeman Acres, canoe livery and resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Glad you could join us off the beaten path. With autumn right around the corner on this week's show, we celebrate the fall by getting right into the spirit. Or should we say spirits? Our first stop is one of Northern Michigan's premier wineries, Rose Valley Winery of Ogemaw County. It's harvest time and the grapes are ripe and ready. It's the perfect time for Vintner Adam of Rose Valley to take us on a behind-the-scenes tour of this taste of Northern Michigan. Then we visit Bel Air High School with a return visit to Master Jack O'Lantern Carver, art instructor Ray Villafane. His creations have since garnered worldwide attention. His art is amazing, but in the case of pumpkin carving, fleeting at best. Join us this week as we capture this moment in a Michigan autumn to savor the art of Ray Villafane. Coming up next on Michigan Magazine. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Autumn in Michigan is truly a wonderful, colorful time, with the forests, meadows, and fields coming alive for one final hoopla from Mother Nature. With collages of color as a backdrop, wildlife and humankind prepare for the colder weather inevitable here in Michigan. Farmers are busy in the fields with harvest in one last plow. Pumpkins take center stage for many, but for some, like Adam Kolajewski, the precious grape is in the spotlight. Adam is owner and vintner of Rose Valley Winery, one of two wineries located in the small northeast Michigan community of Rose City. Is Northeast Michigan really in the wine business, you might ask? You bet. And doing quite well with award-winning wines lovingly created by local hands and purchased at sellout speed. Who would have thought? Well, it took the foresight and belief by entrepreneurs and wine lovers like Adam to take the educated leap of faith into the world of commercial winemaking in a region never thought by some to be conducive to respectable winemaking. Wineries are popping up throughout northeastern Michigan at an amazing pace. For Adam, winemaking on a commercial basis seemed to be inevitable. Well, I've been in the wine business now commercially and legally for six years. Uh, prior to that, I was a home winemaker. As a hobby, you have to be careful because hobbies sometimes can get carried away and you end up uh, working seven days a week in, in a legitimate winery. I came to Rose City because the land was available, the community was welcoming. It just seemed like a nice place to come, so we, and I owned the land anyway, so we put, uh, put the building up and started uh, in business. We've got good mineral rich soil. Soil in this area is deposited by the last glacial period and there was a lot of minerals ground up and mi mixed with the soil and so it makes good mineral rich soil. We don't have climate to have champion us because it does have uh, late spring frost and early fall frost but that just means that we have to be more selective in the variety of grapes that we grow and we're growing cold hardy uh, hybrids that were mostly developed by a gentleman in uh, upstate Wisconsin for the Wisconsin Minnesota winters and their winters are a little more hardy than ours so if the grapes will grow there they'll grow, grow here and, uh, and they are growing very well. The nice thing about the hybrid grapes, cold hardy hybrid grapes, is they bud out late in the spring, so you avoid this late spring frost. And the grapes are usually harvesting about the uh, Labor Day weekend or the first couple of weeks in September. Mm -hmm. So your grapes are harvested and 
the sugar content is up before the frost, the early frost in the fall. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes it uh, good for our area. Quality grapes? Quality grapes, yes. yes. And it makes for even better wine, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Once we get our, our bricks, which is a the term for the sugar content in the grapes, up to 22%, 21 or 22 percent, it's time to harvest. What's excellent about this in Row City is you have a tasting room here. Yes, sir. People could come in in groups and uh, uh, take a look at your variety. You've got quite the variety. How, how many uh, types do you have? I think we have about 16, 17 varieties right now. Okay. And three or four more in the back room ready to be bottled. I see. Right. And uh, what would you say is the more popular variety or the most in demand? Uh, do you have such a thing? Uh, yes. Our, uh, Last year, our, our best seller, as far as the number of bottles per week that were sold, was a raspberry wine, mm. and that was that smacked real good. Uh -huh. And but uh, we have a Rifle River Red, which is a semi-sweet red wine, that okay. was very popular. Okay. And then uh, we have a sweet white, and then we have two or three dry varieties that are mm -hmm. doing real well. Mm -hmm. So when you first started out, I, I know you've got people in the fields picking them, but did you have to get out there in the very beginning and pick your own grapes and start from scratch? Or oh, well, yes. In, uh, a way, yeah. in a way, yes. We, I first had to plant the grapes. I had help planting. And we have about three and a half acres under in, in grapes, mm -hmm. which is around 15,000 plants. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I planted you know, a, a lot of them, not all of them. But, uh, and I have, uh, I go out and pick, I still pick today, although I don't pick as fast as I used to. I let the younger folks do the fast picking. I, yeah. I amble around, you know, uh -huh. right. shout orders. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Any plans for further development or expansion or have you found that niche? I think that we've done about what I'd like to do here. But I have a daughter, Stephanie, who is mm. coming up. Okay. And she is working her way into the winery, and I know she'll not be satisfied with status quo. Uh huh. So we'll probably be seeing some additions and right. expansion of the winery and also the grape uh, so production. This, so this is quite the family operation then. Huh? Yes, it is. Yeah. My goodness. As it should be. Yeah. It's a family owned and operated company that has on staff an extended family of employees. Each wine, whether it be created from grapes or numerous other Michigan fruits, is meticulously processed from growing, picking, and fermentation to bottling to guarantee a true taste of northern Michigan. It's an ozone generator that uh, imparts ozone into the water. So when we're doing our sanitizing for washing tanks or cleaning bottles or rinsing bottles, we use ozonated water. Uh, the, the ozone comes up through the line and we pump it right through our bottling system. It uh, flushes each bottle with a, a spray and uh, disinfects the bottles. It's a good st uh, sterilizing agent. We use ozonation for washing tanks and everything else in the winery, so we keep things nice, nice and clean and sterilized. And then we, uh, from the bottle process, from the clean bottles, we go over to the bottler. We have a six uh, bottle set up. It's gravity fed from the tank, and uh, each bottle is calibrated to 750 mils, so we know that's accurate. So when you're buying your wine, you're getting the right amount of wine. And uh, from the bottler, we take it over to the corking machine, and uh, at the corker, we just apply the corker through a pneumatic corking and one time, one at a time pretty much, and uh, take it over and get it set up, and then we slide on a Mylar cap, a black cap, heat shrink that, and then we put that into a box, and at a later time we'll pull it back and put a label on it. So. Okay, what are we bottling today? Today we're bottling Brianna, which uh, it's a grape that we got up in Johannesburg, Michigan, which is north of here a little bit. Uh, first time we've ever fermented it and processed it, but it came out great. It's got a little spice to it. It's kind of semi-sweet and uh, very enjoyable to drink. The popularity of Northern Michigan wines and wineries is being perpetuated in cooperation with the other vineyard and winery in town. Rose Valley Winery and Valley Mist Vineyards and Winery hold each year an annual fall wine festival. This year is the second annual and will be held October 27th and the 28th. There'll be hay rides between the two wineries and also be plenty of food, of course wines, and plenty of fun, including this year an actual grape stomp with games for kids and live entertainment. A big thanks to Adam and crew for the story behind the story of Rose Valley Winery. For more information on the winery, 
Gallery and upcoming community events, visit their website at www.rosevalleywinery.net. And for more information on the growing wine industry in Michigan, along with maps and info on the various wineries and vineyards, go to www.michiganwines.com. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by... You'll find delicious food and fun at Timber Steakhouse, East County Line Road, South Branch, Michigan. You'll find delicious steaks, pizza, and a full menu with the best food in the north. Enjoy the fine food and karaoke fun at Timber Steakhouse, County Line Road, South Branch. 33 Motorsports Park family racing fun for all ages and skill levels. Three tracks located on M33 in Oscoda County. Come watch or join in the action all year long. Developed for motorcycles, quads, UTVs, and snowmobiles. 33 Motorsports Park. Club X Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Club X Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Club X on Mapes Road, Mile. Audubon, Michigan brings with it the time-honored tradition of jack-o'-lantern carving. So it was only a matter of time till the tradition of simple carving turned into a more elaborate fine art through the creativity of a northern Michigan man, Ray Villafane of Bel Air. Ray teaches art classes K through 12 at Bel Air area schools in northwestern lower Michigan and found pumpkins to be an abundant medium in the area. That discovery has developed into an annual display by Ray and his art students of virtual three-dimensional works of carving art. Michigan Magazine visited Bel Air High School one early autumn morning to witness Ray's talent and some of the extraordinary work his ninth through 12th grade students were creating. Shortly before class, we talked with Ray about how he first discovered the potential fine art in pumpkins. About five years ago, uh, I was living in Ohio and I brought a pumpkin home to carve and I just got graduated a couple years prior, graduated uh, college, and I figured, well, you know, why, why not, you know, I used to just do the triangles on them like everyone else, and uh -huh. so I said, let me try carving it like I would, like, like I say, clay or wood, and I, I took a knife to it, and it didn't look like these, but <laughs> it kind of, I mean, it, it, uh, it came out all right. At the time, I, I thought it was neat, and uh, that was that, and a few years later, I moved up here, and I... Uh, kid wanted to know if he could paint the pumpkin in class. I said, yeah, bring it in. And they brought a couple in, and I said, well, I'm going to try carving it. And I tried try to do it again, and it was a little better. And before I know what other students like this, they brought in more pumpkins. And I experimented with various tools, and what turned into a couple of pumpkins uh, escalated into students bringing in too many pumpkins. Uh, I, would, I would come up to the classroom, and, uh, and I still do. Uh, uh -huh. Usually there's a pumpkin, there's pumpkins, either students I don't even have or don't know standing with the uh, door waiting, you know, asking if I could carve a pumpkin for them or, or there'd be, there's a, usually a pumpkin there with a little note, uh, Mr. Villafane, can you carve this one for me? What I've noticed also, it doesn't matter what the size or what the, the figuration is of this pumpkin, you don't use stencils uh, and you don't use automatic or uh, powered tools. Uh, what I use is a... Uh, Metal loop, similar to like what a clay okay. clay loop. So that's one of the essential tools. Yeah, this is this is. Uh, I say 90% of it is done with this. Then there's some smaller versions, the store board. These are, like I said, working for clay. Uh, various shapes for, for for different areas, you know. And as you as you do more of these, you kind of yeah, you kind of know which one for what need you have. I mean, some are round. Uh, this triangle and that one's kind of squared off. Okay. And then like like a paring knife. Uh, sharp end is right here as opposed to there's a dull dull side there and this is what I'll do at the very end um, pumpkins are, are kind of translucent so you need to exaggerate all the the shadows on it or else uh, they, it, the, the light it won't capture the shadows of, of a face so you want to get in a little deeper with the uh, with the smile marks and uh -huh. various areas so I use a, a paring knife there but okay. I'd say most of, most of it's done with this most of and, it's done with that? yeah and, and when you start a project like this, do you know right offhand, when you look at the pumpkin, the figurine, or uh, what the pumpkin is shaped like, do you know in your mind what you want that to be? Sometimes. I go, I buy pumpkins wholesale from a uh, farm, Bolts uh, farm here in Ellsworth, and 
I usually I get to walk the pumpkin patch before the pumpkins are picked and pick out which ones I want. And, and he saves them for you. Yeah, and what I look for are ones that are heavy for its size, which means it'll have a thick meat to it. Thick skin. Right? Yeah, and I look for something that has got a point coming towards it. Uh, I don't. I don't usually use the ones typically everyone wants. The perfect round ones. They're hard yeah. to put a face on because they tend to be flat. No if character. I, well, I, I I need a point on it. So if I want to get the face, I can go around, get the tip of the nose, and, and work I around. See. If I'm doing a person. Uh -huh. Usually I get something with a point. Or once in a while you find find a pumpkin that's got some. Uh, with a vine, makes some deep uh, cuts into it. And I always grab those because. You can make kind of lips out of those, where the yeah. vine goes, and, and you kind of make a face. And, and there's a bunch, lots of things you could, you, you know, you can kind of make out of them. You just got to look at them for a while. But uh, I can't just usually, I don't just pick up a pumpkin and say, okay, I'm going to make, or say, I want to make a uh, pirate and just pick up any pumpkin. Like, there is a lot of choosing involved, and okay, uh, does this, I can kind of see when I look at the pumpkin, is that going to be the shape I need? And as I work, sometimes it changes. Um, while I'm middle of carving, if, if the pumpkin tends to want to do something else, I kind of let it go that way. Do you have in mind, though, when you, when you start, uh, uh, I mean, are, are these supposed to be characters that you have seen, or are, are these uh, characters that uh, you just let the hands and the flow of the mind just... I'll, some, I'll use a mirror. They don't look like me, but I'll use, I'll use a mirror to, to get some of the... Uh, so I get the gesture of the face. Like this one here, uh, what I'll use a mirror for, for some of the, the marks and, uh, on where some of the wrinkles, I'll make that similar face and I'll kind of look for those wrinkles in it to see where they go and it, and it makes for a much more believable uh, pumpkin face. Well, this is a season. I mean, uh, this is seasonal, definitely. I mean, yeah. it's uh, what? You, you start in this, what, in September or October? Uh, yes, and I, as soon as I get pumpkins, I, I start itching to do it. Um, and I'm kind of glad that they don't last. A lot of people say, <laughs> a lot of people say, uh, you know, isn't there something you could spray on it or do something to it? And but that I don't worry about it. a fresh idea for the following year. Yeah, I, I kind of like, fresh. it's like ice carving, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, what would, you'd rather have a... a an ice swan rather than a plastic one for a wedding and, and I think the same thing with pumpkins if you seal them it's fun and it's also fun to see them go they, they take on a different life outside they'll last uh, if it's cool outside they'll last a couple weeks at least and then they'll start changing which is always a neat part after that you know what's been the most fascinating thing of the, of the of pumpkin carving to you? Uh, boy it, uh, I, just coming up with a, a different face. I mean, yeah. uh, I've done the pirate before, but uh, people like it, and so I do it again. But whenever I do a, a different one I haven't done before, it's it's always neat. Uh, I, I've done everything from a football play. I'll leave the the rind for the face mask and the helmet, and I'll kind of carve behind the rind. So there's a football play behind a pumpkin helmet. Um, it's it, I, I like all aspects of it, really. Um, I, I kind of tend to like the pumpkins that don't have, e like this is kind of impressive. It, it's, it's neat, but it's not one of my favorites because it looks like a nice carving on a pumpkin, whereas these here look like the pumpkins coming to life, sort of, because it kind of blends right into the pumpkin. Yes. And w when you have the ears separate, uh, it looks like a piece of artwork on, on the pumpkin. Top, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I kind of right. like, I yeah. tend to like faces yeah. like like those here I could I could teach someone how to do a simple face and they you know anyone I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I could teach them how to do a, a very simple face um, this tool here takes a little getting used to um, and but once you get used to using this uh, it's, it's quite, it, it makes it a lot easier than using a knife. Well, Ray, uh, what you're doing here in beautiful Bel Air, Michigan, is, uh, I think, uh, real neat. And uh, teaching the young uh, students uh, this wonderful medium of pumpkin sculpting, or sculpting, or carving. Uh, and uh, who knows, it might be one of these masters uh, sc uh, pumpkin sculptors come out of, out of your class. And we thank you so much for being part of Michigan Magazine, and we wish you continued success. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining us on this edition of Michigan Magazine. It's been a great pleasure indeed. We'll see you here next week on RFD or Ustream.tv or MichiganMagazine.com as we explore Michigan's highways and byways. You'll be amazed at the impact Michigan has had and is having in the nation as well as the world. Our people, our places, and events are second to none. From crafters to artists, from folk to fine, Come along with us each week. I'm Barry Stussman inviting you back here next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine.
We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Randy's Restaurant and Bakery, downtown Rose City. Freshly baked daily, cookies, breads, pastries, donuts, homemade pies, and more. Randy's has a full menu to tackle the heartiest appetite, including pizza and hand-dipped ice cream. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Greenbrier Golf Course, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. You'll love this beautiful, professionally designed 18-hole course with a bulky golfer in mind. From pro to beginner, Greenbrier will have you returning for more. Enjoy the watered fairways, driving range, full-service restaurant, bar with Wi-Fi, and gift shop. Greenbrier, Sage Lake Road, Lupton. TriPoint Connections, a church connecting to God, people, and community. TriPoint Connections invites you to rediscover church in a relaxed, refreshing atmosphere. Join us Saturdays for fellowship and worship.